When I went to America at the age of 17, I had a major identity crisis. Was I an Arab? Was I English? Was I Malay? I couldn't answer the question. I felt alien whenever I went back to Egypt. And because I didn't pronounce Arabic with the same pure Egyptian accent, I was called Khawaga by my cousins. And yet even in Malaysia, I was alien. Wherever I was, I was an alien. But I was loved and I loved. I loved my cousins. <coughs> we loved each other. We enjoyed each other's company. But the question of who I was was an, an urgent one, a demanding one, which demanded answers. Why do I raise these questions? I raise these questions because I'm sure many of you who are growing up in different cultures are going through these types of questions. Either you are asking them or you are battling with them internally. But if you do not bring them out into the open and deal with them directly, they can fester inside. They can create conflict. And conflict can create rage and frustration and an inability to express the deepest part of oneself. The way I had to answer the question of who I was was to narrow the boundary of my self-definition. So my definition was less defined by my culture, of my ancestry, not defined by the accidents of different parts of the world that I lived in, but my fundamental identity had to be based on something that would remain unchanged no matter where I was, no matter what culture I was, no matter what profession I was. Another way of, by which I got my arms around this question was when I was young and everybody was asking me with a little smile, young Faisal, what do you want to be when you grow up? And between the ages of four and the ages of twelve, I must have gone through four different ambitions. From the, proverb, from the proverbial train driver, which every young English kid at that time wanted to be, to being an actor, to being a movie director, to being a scientist, until I decided, well, if I wanted to be all these things, then who am I? If my nature of my being was so changeable and so fickle. And I realized, oh my God, these adults asked the wrong question. They phrased the question wrong. The question wasn't what I wanted to be, but what I wanted to do. But then this raised the question, what did I want to be? By that time I was studying Shakespeare and Hamlet, so the poetic sense of to be or not to be was not only a sense of a dramatic flair, it was a deeply personal and urgent existential question. But this is the question we each have to ask of ourselves. What do we want to be? The nature of our being. It had to be based to my mind, on my ethics, on my character, and on my connection to my creator. What this accomplished for me was that it freed me. It freed me from the, the shackles of history and connected me with an eternal connection. 
It freed me from the conflicts that I had between my Arab nature and my English nature and my Malaysian nature. It freed me from the clash of cultures that was raging within me. But it also empowered me. It empowered me to go to, to, to explore any other culture and to very easily move within it. It has allowed me to come to Australia and in 10 days to want to be a fair income Australian.